All right, I am back. Let's see. This is the new one. Yeah, all right. Transition over to that. Um, okay, so this like looks just like the uh, uh, my my Linux laptop, right? Well, uh, of course, like the difference is this background, the nice the nice kitty cat. It's uh, that's the new Ubuntu twenty. Um, but if I show you what's actually going on behind the scenes, uh, choo -choo, let me. Oh, I have only got this one screen, so I will. Uh, here's here's all this stuff going on. If I undo that, do I bring you down? Uh, I have a VirtualBox installed, and uh, I've just put in Ubuntu 20 into, into there. Uh, so then I move it over to this other screen here, full screen it, and then set Ubuntu, oh, sorry, uh, set, um, what is it, uh, set OBS here to look at that other, like actually just capture the, um, the VirtualBox window and now suddenly I've got full Linux running running on here. So this is a desktop, so I'm giving it a significantly more memory than is suggested, like five gigabytes or so. We'll see if I want to give it like more memory. Uh, I'm also giving it more CPU cores. Uh, I think like uh, five or six, I can't remember. I set this up like a couple days ago and haven't touched it until now. Uh, so I figured, okay, wife is out shopping. Um, I've got a little bit of time before she gets home. Then at that time, we'll get lunch, probably head out for a little hike near nearby uh, since we're still, you know, in lockdown. And uh, and then, I don't know, figure out something else to do with this beautiful day. <coughs> of course, it would be helpful if I learn how to <coughs> not develop a drinking problem. Every time I do that, I think about the, the airplane movie. Oh man, <coughs> I somehow managed to get that down the wrong pipe. Got a hot tea here. So um, this window, it's in VirtualBox. So if you've never used VirtualBox, <coughs> excuse me, uh, VirtualBox is a great sort of uh, virtualization system. It allows you to install other operating systems uh, into a unique section of memory, hard drive space, and CPUs. So it actually dedicates CPUs uh, for it. So I've got Linux natively running over here, uh, and it's emulating basically, you know, standard standard hardware. Uh, so I don't think I've actually done anything with this besides, I think I may have updated it. Uh, but if I open up the terminal in here, it just shows that we're, we're in VirtualBox. What I really want to do today is get Rust installed, get GG and EZ installed, uh, download probably our Infinite Runner and see, does it run at over 30 frames per second? Because if it does, then this is what I can use for all my development here. And the Linux laptop that I have, I can just start using that for my personal stuff, you know, all together, which will be great. That's exactly what I'm looking for because then if for some reason I do want to like start experimenting with like, you know, playing games, doing some other stuff, it's all on this one device. I can move back and forth with my mouse to all the Windows stuff. So it's perfect. That would, it would be exactly what I want to do. So let's start by seeing if I can install, um, uh, uh, I guess, Rust. So. Let's go and grab, I'm actually curious, can I even, can you see that? No, oh, okay, so there's a little window down here that I can see that allows me to control, um, I guess I control the meat machine so I can like take a snapshot, I could pause it, I could do other little things to it. Um, I can change the keyboard and devices but you can't see me playing with that. So that's super interesting. So let's just open up this browser. The other nice thing about this is I can set up a completely, uh, if I want you know, another experimental box, uh, complete new box that I set up 
and it doesn't have anything to do with um, this Brooks built one. So if I screw it up, it doesn't matter. So let's go grab Rust Up. So we're going to install you. Curl not installed, all right. Well, the beginning of all the app stuff. So apt, let's update first, make sure. Oh. Be helpful if I spelled it correctly. Um, 11 packages can be updated. Do I want to... Oh, I could check them out. I'll probably update those later on. Let's, uh, for right now. Um, right, I need to sudo apt install curl. Then I can do this. Uh, default installation. I am again sort of experimenting with, uh, I've changed the room just around a tiny, tiny bit. Uh, the camera is now like on this side. I used to have it like on, on this side over here. Uh, it'll, it'll be interesting. Um, I think that this is going to be a better, a better situation. When I do have the camera on this monitor looking at me though, it catches the edge of the desk that I have over here. Um, all right. So Rust is configured cool so if I open up a new terminal so cargo um, no it didn't find it okay so I have to add this um, to, oh so this is bash RC I think let's find out what our shell is bin bash Oh, Vim is not even in here. Well, we gotta fix that. Add install Vim. Man, if this ends up working, it's gonna be super awesome. And then next week, I will just just be all this. Uh, and then I can you know play around with updates, get everything out. Oh, man, it'll be so nice. Um, okay, so we've got all of this. Let's see, Vim is installed, so now I can come into here. This is basically like whatever we get when we first install um, uh, Ubuntu 20. So there shouldn't be anything secret in it. Uh, let's go ahead and now paste in, source this, save you. If I now open up a new tab, Yes, cargo is now here and ready to go. So at that point, I can close the old tab. And let's do um, rest up install. Uh, what do we want? Oh, we need to choose what we want to install. Wait, is, um, is the latest installed already? Rest up show. Okay, yeah, we've got uh, Rust 1.43.1. That is the latest, so we're, we're good to go there. All right, so with the, uh, the next thing here, let's now see if we can get, I guess like GGEZ is gonna have to be installed. Ooh, so we need to install all the stuff that it needs. So uh, what is this? Um, github.com slash ggez and then it has the build for every platform and then in Linux here we need to install these things up oh, sudo
Yes, I do. Okay, so those are installed. That was pretty fast. Um, and now if I, uh, let's just download one of our, the, the project we're working on, the Infinite Runner. So I haven't, I haven't logged in to GitHub on this window yet. I guess that's probably not a problem. We'll just go find it manually. So github.com slash brooks. Uh, I don't remember what it's called. It's like brooks, it's brooks dash builds or brooks underscore builds. Or not, not at all. It's brooks dash builds. And so if I come here, we've got a learning game design patterns. Uh, let's clone with HTTPS. Uh, so let's go to our desktop and put it on there. Git is not installed. All right, cool. So sudo apt install git. Yes, absolutely needed. All right, let's try this again. Git clone this down, it unpacks the objects, so now I should go to CD into learning game design patterns. We'll CD into the GG infinite runner, and now let's see how long, like what happens if I try to uh, compile this. So I'm looking at 1.2% CPU usage right now, 60 frames per second. We're streaming at like 6,000 kilobits for a second, everything is looking fine. So as soon as I hit this, cargo run, let's see what this, what this does. It shouldn't have any effect on us because I'm limiting VirtualBox to only a very small, like a handful of, of cores instead of like the majority of cores that I have on the system. Like it makes sense, the fans on the computer spin up I don't think you can hear those. Uh, the computer is below my desk, so it, it shouldn't be a problem for that. The CPU actually just went down, <laughs> 0.9. So I think I think we're good so far. No drop frames. 60 frames per second solid. Okay, I think you're able to hear the fan now. Let's see if I can change the uh, the orientation of the mic. That might help a little bit. All right, let's try that. Um, no idea if it still works. I have an arm, but I'm missing one little piece of it. So that would probably be best. I could like attach it over here or over here, like have it hanging up above and then, then it'll be even farther away from the computer. All right, so it's running and we're getting uh, almost 60 frames per second on this title screen. So this is uh, less than the, the Linux notebook was getting, but I'm also giving it less memory and less uh, CPU cores uh, than the notebook. So that kind of makes sense. And so if I decide to play, ooh, you're not working. I'm pressing the space bar, it's not affecting. Do I need to, I am in here. It's exactly the right, the sort of like the same size that I have, but the space bar is not hitting that. So I might need to like sort of go in and, and take a look at what's going on. Let's see if we can get uh, VS Code installed in here. Now that's, that's sort of another question is, do I want to install VS Code in here or do I want VS Code to be running outside on the Windows system and then I'm sharing a directory into uh, VirtualBox. I don't know. Um, of course, I could also set up 
vim and just go straight vim inside of here. That might work too. All right, so downloaded you. It's a .deb file directly, so I could just go ahead and straight up install you here. Oh, I want to go to downloads. Uh, we're going to, uh, let's see, sudo apt install code. Ooh, okay, load disk space and file system root. Okay, so I do need to up the disk space on the system if I want to do this. And I wonder, can I do this now? So let's not, let's not install that. Let me ignore. All right, power off time. So I'm gonna power you off. That will take this away. Um, ooh, you see this sort of setup. Interesting that this appears uh, to you. I don't think there's anything like secret showing on here. So can I set you? Plus I'll, also if there was, I would just, you know, change it. Uh, like re restart it. I want to... Oh, you don't see this, the, the settings window. That's interesting. Um, okay, so I'm giving it four CPUs, uh, four gigabytes of memory. I mean, that seemed okay for like running it at 60 frames per second. Um, storage, okay, I am giving you, how do I, how do I see what storage, controller, Okay, okay. So I'm giving it 8.85 gigabytes. So I need to give it a little bit more, uh, especially if I want to like install VS Code or something in it. Uh, am I able to change that? No, it doesn't. Oop, I just deleted it. Um, that's not what I wanted. So if I cancel you, uh, so I probably have to like start over again and give it better stuff. So let's just keep this powered off and I'll try another one. I have a beeping um, a laundry that my wife started before I left. So I'm gonna go to there. Ooh, WTF blub, uh, file virtual media manager. Ooh, okay, so you can't see what I'm doing for some reason, it's not capturing this window correctly. But if I take a look at you, double click, ooh, yes, yes, I can increase the size. So if I give you now, um, like giving it eight gigabytes. Let's give it like uh, 20 gigabytes. 20 gigabytes, apply, close. Uh, let's see if that works. I'm gonna go ahead and start it. And I'm also seeing whether or not this um, shows up here. I want you to be in full screen over here. Probably need to increase the partition in Linux then too. Oh, I haven't, I didn't think about that. You're probably right. It won't have access to that space right away. Um, oh, and you didn't automatically switch over the source too. That's a little bit unfortunate. So I go back to studio mode in virtual box capture, not that. Not that, that. Interesting capture method. I mean, I, I guess I could always say like always capture, always capture this. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Um, 
Is it, I can't remember if it's D, D, F, I think. Um, there's H. So yeah, we're still stuck to 8.4, so nine, 10 gigabytes. So can I see the rest of it here or? Hmm. I haven't done resizing in Linux in forever. So I might need to look that up. Unless you remember WTF Blub. Uh, we could we could just look it up, do some Googling. I, I am going to go really quickly and put some stuff in the dryer. I'll be right back. I am back. You could use the G-parted UI, but no idea if it works on a booted system. Uh, Scratch Pocket, uh, hello, welcome. Um, you like CF disk. Okay, I haven't used G-parted in for, so the last time I was, when I was a systems administrator doing this type of stuff, oh geez, it was on Red Hat, Red Hat Enterprise Systems. But we used, LFSs and encrypted encrypted drives. So we're the, the commands to do that were completely different. Um, you like oh uh, CF disk has a GUI. Um, let's try this. All right, GUI enough. All right, so. Here we have free space, 10 more gigabytes. So I want to add this in. Uh, we need to see how to get there. Is there like a help? Question mark. This is CF disk, a curses based disk partition partitioning program. It let's you create, delete, and modify partitions on a block device. Okay, cool. So could totally delete the current partition. That that would be great. Create new partition from free space. Um, change the partition type. Dump dump this layout. Then write write it to the disk. Okay. Hmm. Now, I mean, it's a good point. Can I actually do this to the partition that I have? I'm, I'm guessing that I probably, what I wanna do is create that extra 10 gigabytes that I gave. Just basically have, okay, this is uh, the 10 gigabytes that we started with, that's our booting system. And then our running system for everything else can be on this, this new partition. I could do that, then maybe move like the home directory over to it. I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? I just have to reinstall into um, uh, into VirtualBox. Like that's the the benefit of using something like VirtualBox for this is, I you know very very low risk here. Um, so I can create a new partition from free space. Uh, you can also snapshot in VBox and restore it if it fails. I mean, yeah, I could do that too. Although at this point, if it fails, like I'm not that far, like I'm so not far into the process. Uh, I don't know, Word, words are hard. Um, I've spent so little time on this, I might as well just reinstall from scratch and give it the space that I actually want to give it. <laughs> um, all right, so. Let's try changing the partition, no, creating a new partition on that. So that's create. So if I come down here to free space and I create a partition uh, that's n, not c. Oh, 
Okay, I had to do n return. Is there stuff down here? Oh, there's stuff down here. Interesting. Why why am I not able to see that? When I full screened it, I lost like I wasn't able to see some of the 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 information. That is super interesting. I was going uh basically on a blind here. Um okay, so this gives me dev sda3 which is the full 10 gigabytes. Uh if I um, there, there is a way I remember. So bootable delete. Um, I don't think there's a way to merge partitions um, together. So now if I just install into here. Now installing VS code, because it, it wants to actually do like a full install. So it's going to do that into like the main, the main system. Uh, I think there's a way to like tell apt where to install it to, uh, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Let's move our learning game design patterns over into SDA3 and like try running it from there. See if see if things like work better for us. So if I write this out, yep, let's do it. It's been altered. Let's quit. Uh, so if I go to CD, I think it's mount. Uh, it's not mount. It's is it mount. Oh, do I have to, I have to mount it still? Because um, I do du nope df. Is it going to show it to me here? No, because it, dev sd three sda three. It doesn't. So I need to mount it next. Uh, what is it? Mount. Is it the mount command? Uh, D. You can tell it's been forever since I've done this type of work. Okay, so mount all file systems mentioned FS tab. Right, FS tab is where we put it if we want it to mount on boot. Okay, and so mount options source target. Path label UUID, so I can do like slash, uh, what is it? Slash dev slash SDA3. And I'm, I'm fairly sure that's what it was. Let's. Double check. It is dev SDA3, yes. Uh, can I? I can't. Ooh, mount point. Yeah, okay, so it's just partition type. Oh, do I need to reformat it now? It's just partitioned. I need to format it. I can make it bootable. No, I don't want it to be bootable. Uh, change the partition type. Linux, uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, okay, so I need to format off this, and I forgot the reformat command. I mean, I get dd, but that that. The copies. Uh, let's not let's not open that up. Um, let's see. I want to Linux uh, format. Uh, I guess it's format drive. Format disk. Okay, I could use F disk. So man F disk. All right, manipulate the disk partition table so I can F disk and then the device. So we know that that's slash, um, oh, make FS also. Ooh, I haven't, make 
FS, build a Linux file system. Make FS, front end is deprecated, deprecated in favor of file system specific make FS type utils. Wait a second, so there's make FS, so. Ooh, okay, so I can do make FS dot, what do I want to do here? Uh, ext4 maybe? I don't think anything else that I want. I think ext4 is what I would want. Um, so ext4, um, is there a help? Invalid option, so just show me the help anyways. Uh, so probably create block size. Okay, can I man the full thing? Makefs.ext4. I can. All right, let's try full screening this while I actually get like all of the the size that I want. Yeah, ext4 is the default. Go. I remember when it was ext3, um, and. I haven't really paid attention to it in a long, long time. Uh, so let's see. So options, is there gonna be good defaults? If omitted, block size is heuristically determined by the file system side and the expected usage of the file system. Okay, I am. Um, that means I can leave that out. Uh, cluster root directory. Copy the contents of the given directory into the root directory. I don't. I could copy like the user account over, but I think I want to keep it empty for right now. Uh, is there, usually at the bottom there are some examples, but it looks like there isn't in this case. Let's go back. Uh, so make 2fs dash c dash l. Check the device for bad blocks before creating a file system. I don't think I need to do that. Oh, I could specify the option twice. Uh, what's dash L? File name. Read the bad blocks list from file name. Okay, so I don't need any of that. Uh, so block size, we're going to leave that blank. Cluster size, I'm going to leave that blank. Root directory, we're not. We're going to leave that blank. Uh, slash D, capital D. Use direct IO when writing to the disk. This avoids make 2FS's dirtying a lot of buffer cache memory, which may impact other applications running on a busy server. Uh, okay, so I don't need to do that. Um, I mean, all these are optional. So I'm thinking I probably can just leave them alone. What's the first non-optional one? Device. That's the only non-optional one is the device. So that's slash dev slash SDA3. Let's do it. So we're going to, come on. You know what? I'm betting that my, the resolution that I have here for full screen must not be the resolution that I have actually on the screen. This might be a problem here. Let me, let me double check. Come on. View, I have scaled mode, um, virtual screen. So I have it scaled to 200%. Let me go down to, 175%. That makes it a little bit smaller for you. I mean, it's not terrible for me, but it's no longer filling up the entire window. But I think that's because it's probably because like this 16 by 10, 16 by 9. Um, I have this on a, on a nice ultra wide display. So I may have to pl play with the resolution of this system. But all right, let's do ext4. And we'll do slash. Um, 
can't I stretch the source in OBS? I can stress the source. I have it like full screen. I could go like beyond the full screen to do. Uh, that's not happy if I do that. Uh, that's a little bit weird. It's it's a little bit tough to like figure out exactly how to stretch it. Of course, I'm also seeing those black borders on my side as well, which that's that's super interesting. Um, let's let's get this going first. So slash dev uh, sda three permission denied. Of course it is. We'll do that with sudo. All right, allocating table groups, allocating super groups. So now, um, I don't think that mounts it right away, but I think now I can mount slash SDA slash dev SDA three. Um, can't find it. Can I mount it into a specific place? Um, I shouldn't have black borders, but I think it's the resolution. Um, so if I let me try, let me try something. Let me show you what I'm looking at. If I, not settings, studio mode, then over here, go to main, display capture and have it capture the other display. And transition. This is literally what I'm looking at. So this is not capturing um, the, the Linux system. Uh, so if I undo full screen mode, now now you're seeing this. Now if I go to scale mode instead, you moved over there for some reason. And if I, oh, I can't make you big because just come up here. Go like that manually. So that scales, uh, that scales and like it actually hits like the full screen now. So this this might work. If you have the VBox guest tools installed, it should change the system resolution with your VBox window. I don't think I have those installed. Um, that would be something that would be really interesting to do. If I now switch back to VirtualBox, then it's now taking up the full screen again. And I can actually see everything. So that's that's good. The VBox guest tools installed. So I will have to take a look at those. Um, so now what's really cool is I can do things like open up Notion here, which is what I use to like stir all my guests. I could even put this in front of, oh, nope, that makes it go away. Oh, I. My mouse did the uh, the thing where it double clicked on me for accident. Uh, so in here, I'll just, just put a note. Um, install uh, virtual box guest tools um, on Windows computer. Okay, so that's a, a note for myself to take a look at later. Do, okay, so back to this. Uh, we were trying to mount you. Uh, take a look at man mount. So it's the device, uh, and then I have to tell it. Ooh, okay, so we can mount device and the directory we want to mount it to. So I think it's man, uh, no, not man, mount. I'm probably going to have to sudo this too. Um, slash dev. SDA3 to slash MNT. Um, let's just call it other for right now. Only we can do that. Of course it can. Um, mount point does not exist. Ooh, okay. So do I have to create this myself? So what if I do this like, what if I do like a weird thing? What if I, um, uh, oh, CD into MNT. MNT. So I've got absolutely nothing in here. 
if I, is there also a slash mount? There is not. Uh, there's usually like a media or something. But in MNT, if I now, um, root owns this, so I'm gonna have to do sudo uh, make directory. If I call this like my, my stream or something, uh, yeah, exactly, other. Um, you're doing dash p v, I think p, v is, is, well, I can't remember what, what p v does. Um, man, make sure. P is, oh, if no parents create that, right? And then v is verbose. Uh, sure, let's do that. So sudo make dir. Uh, now we know that uh, mount create uh, exists. So I can do mount. Um, Unnecessary since I'm in mount right now. Exactly. So I could just make directory mount uh, exactly where I am. We'll call it other. Now I can do sudo mount slash dev sda3. Uh, I betting that I want to give it a full, so I'll do mount other into there. Now if I cd into other, we're, we're in here. So this should be, uh, let's do du df dash h. Now in other, we see that we have 9.8 gigabytes available here. So now if I move, um, if I move the, the Rust stuff over into it, so that's gonna be my home directory slash desktop uh, learning game design patterns. Let's move this to here. Um, ooh, cannot create directory. So let's let's make let's make ourselves a directory and give ourselves uh, permissions to deal with this. So the sudo mkdir. We'll call this just um, uh, Brooks. Now, if I want to sudo um, shown whatever what what is my username it is Brooks uh, Brooks Brooks so let's take a look at it oh. so I own it but I need to give it my group so sudo chmod um no not chon uh ch group Brooks, Brooks. All right, so now essentially this is my my directory. I can now move my my home directory stuff. So desktop, learning game design patterns. I want to move this to Brooks slash. So if I cd into Oh, it just took a while for it to do. CD into Brooks. Here is this game design patterns. Let's CD into here. And let's cargo run from this point. Um, can I find cargo Tom? Oh, right. Uh, GGZ. Cargo run in here. Now, it's not capturing the space. Uh, FPS is actually higher than we had before, so it's not running into the problems where we're uh, ran out of disk space. That that's a good sign. Now, if I want to uh, to debug that, figure out like what's going on. Well, in my my Linux laptop, I want to just run it really quickly to make sure that I didn't do anything stupid, like actually make it not work. So this is this is the system that I had uh, been programming with on stream yesterday. So open up terminal, CD and code, bricks builds, learning game design patterns, GG is the infinite runner, cargo run. Right. I had been playing with something. Uh, we implemented that you need to press escape to get out of the window. So I, I ran into the problem where I forgot how to use my own game and I didn't put instructions for how to get out of the window in this window. So that, that was cool. So escape starts the game. Um, not terrible. So 80 frames per second. Uh, it's not the smoothest game. In the, well, it looks fine here. 
Um, on my system, it's not super, super, super smooth. Uh, I wonder if we can like run top during this and see how close to you know, running out of memory we're getting. Frames per second is super, super good though. Uh, which is not bad at all. If I die, getting to around 54 to 55 frames per second. So that's not bad at all. Uh, guest tools make graphic operations smoother. Ooh, okay, so that's definitely a reason for me to like, tonight, start taking a look into this. But for the basics, I think this is gonna work. Like, I think I'm gonna be able to actually uh, do this. Um, and especially if I just am making command line applications, uh, this will be fine too. So I'm I'm super happy with this. Um, the graphics, like I'm, I'm, I've, it's trying to use OpenGL. So I'm hoping that it's actually using the graphics card for this, as opposed to you know maybe just freaking out and trying to use the CPU for everything. Uh, I wonder we can use we can run top while running this. Let's open up another window here. Let's get a top going. So here's our GGZ Infinite Runner. 135% of the CPUs that we have available. Uh, our memory, so we still have a gigabyte of memory free. So that's good. Is there, so this is not something I've, I've ever looked into before. Is there like the equivalent of top, but shows me like video card? Um, CPU memory. I I don't I don't think I've ever looked into that. Uh, so if we try running this again, what do we get? It's not terrible looking. It's it's about the same. CPU went down. Oh, no, it's about the same. NV top for NVIDIA. Ooh, let's, let's try that. NV top, ooh, not installed, but can be installed. So sudo apt install NV top. Yep, let's get that. I'm um, I'm curious as to whether or not I'm going to need to install the NVIDIA drivers inside of here, or if uh, it's actually going to be utilizing the NVIDIA graphics card that I have regardless. Because I do know that's a thing. I could install like the latest NVIDIA graph uh, drivers, which would work for what I've got. Okay, so NVTOP. Driver not loaded. Okay, so I need to probably install the NVIDIA driver. So sudo apt install. Oh, I forgot what it's called. Um, NVIDIA, I think it's... Uh, so that I could do the graphics drivers or just driver. Is that, is that it? So maybe just driver. Driver, um, VBox using their own drivers and doesn't pass through your GPU. Oh, okay. That's too bad. And I wonder if the tools would actually make it so it does pass through the GPU. So then this won't, this won't matter. Installing installing NVIDIA graphics card drivers inside of here won't do anything. If I take a look at, see I got you still running, let's quit you. Uh, if I look at the tools in here, 
Is there any settings in VirtualBox where I can tell it? Select the display, audio, network, system. Hardware acceleration is enabled. Let's see, video, okay. Ooh, video memory is only 16 megabytes. That's certainly not gonna help. So I probably wanna give it, the problem with virtual machines, they can't pass through the GPU while I'm using it on the host. Yeah, I, I can see that. If I, I wonder if I installed like a second video card, could I pass through like the second video card through it? That would be really cool. Now that being said, uh, for the games that I make with GGZ, or I mean, it's not really games, it's more of like visualizations, uh, or like super simple games, it doesn't seem like it matters at all. Uh, I, I'm, it's able to like just use what I'm, I'm giving it uh, just for, you know, just fine. Let's see if I can turn off and give it more video memory. So let's come back to you. Exit out, exit all of you, power off. Uh, tools like VBox do some kind of GPU acceleration, which does help, but it's a native performance. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand. I'm not gonna be like playing games on it. Like we're making, we're making some basic games, but like I don't think it's gonna be enough for us to like actually need to worry too much about it. So if I come here to advanced, uh, that's base memory, processors, where was it? Display, video memory. Let's up you to like, I don't know, 64 megabytes. Let's see what happens if I start that. And then I need to come back and switch you. Virtual box, out of studio mode. Wait, did you not start? Oh, you're just taking forever. Oh no, this this window over here. So just switch. There we go. And now I want you. There we go. I should tell OBS to always capture like based upon the exact name or something. All right. So if we run you now. Also, like switching over so that it's not constantly um, running out of disk space on like the main uh, the main hard drive would be helpful. So, like moving my home directory over there would probably help quite a bit. So, cd to slash mnt. Oh, I probably need to mount this, don't I? Because if I go to other, yeah, nothing's in here. So let's um, mount into other. And now we can go into other. Here we are with Brooks. And game design patterns, you see infinite runner. I go run. Escape, because we learned that. It's about the same frames per second. Um, it's hard to tell if it's like even slower now. Uh, but I think I think this is gonna be fine. But this is gonna be something that's interesting. Uh, Control R is your favorite bash shortcut. Oh yeah, it's great. Um, I've sometimes used uh, shells in the past, like. That, um, for example, in Z shell or fish or something else, you can configure it to automatically look through Control R. 
uh, whenever you start typing commands, it'll auto-complete them. Oh man, that's the best. So we have this, it's running 75 or so frames per second. Um, it didn't seem to make too big of a difference for what we're de dealing with, but that's not that's not a big, you know, not, not a big deal. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking of. Uh, I'm thinking of maybe giving it significantly more memory. Um, I can I can tell maybe on my Windows system, not on here. What is? Oh man, it's been so long since I've used Windows properly. Uh, how do I get the? Oh, is it Control Delete? Now let me see the Task Manager. Give me more details. Uh, all right, so. 15% of memory is being used right now. 31% of my CPU, uh, my CPU like capacity. And okay, so performance, yeah, so I can see, I can give it significantly more memory of what I've got. And I can give it more CPU cores. And that will help significantly. Um, oh, and I'm hearing the doors downstairs open and close. So I think uh, my wife is home. So that means it's time to go grab lunch and then we're gonna go on a hike. Um, but this this is showing me like this is gonna work. We're, we're gonna be able to do this. So uh, thank you, um, thank you uh, Scratch WTF uh, for stopping by, helping out with this. Um, and then if you're if you're watching the VOD or you're you're watching and lurking, thank you also for stopping by. This uh, this has been sort of like a good a good way for me to um, you know play around with this, see see how it's going to work. I'm probably going to rebuild it with like just more everything, uh, and then start off from scratch, get everything going, uh, and then uh, starting on Monday we'll be able to continue on my game design pattern sort of learning. Um, uh, at that point in time. So with that, have a great day, everyone. Hope uh, stay safe, and I'll see you all next time.